hi guys and welcome back to my channel today on my channel i'm going to be giving you a four year update on microblading and ombre brows that i have gone through a process of and i've kind of got a little bit of a different outlook on it after this last time of going if you are new around here i would love if you subscribe to my channel by clicking that little red button down below i do have other videos i have my first video where i ever did microblading which it did a step by step of the process day by day what it looked like then i have a touch-up video where i went after i think it was six or eight weeks to have them touched up then I have a one year update video where I went and had them touched up. And then at two years, I switched over from microblading to the ombre powder brows. And now we are at the fourth year where I went to have them touched up and they are still the powder brows. If you are new to the microblading and ombre brow process, what this is, is it is a semi-permanent tattoo. You might be saying, those two words kind of contradict each other because a tattoo is permanent, but this is semi-permanent. This is semi-permanent because it does not go down as deep as a tattoo. Part of the side of them being semi-permanent is they are going to fade over time. Our face also gets much more exfoliation and things like that. So you're gonna lose those top layers of skin quicker on your face as well. So let's start first with my brows and what they look like. I will insert some of the clips from the previous videos here of what my brows look like before I did anything to them. My brows were more rounded or they kind of looked like, I used to joke and say they looked like a little sperm because it was like more hair here and then it went super, super thin to like nothing. So they were very rounded. There was no arch to them whatsoever. My hair is super fine. That's on my head everywhere, but it also was very sparse. I had more hair on one side than the other in the inner center, and then they faded out and there was no tail to my brows whatsoever. So I actually had to fill them in all the time. I couldn't just go out without filling them in or I looked like I had no brows because my hair is also a dirty blonde color naturally. And so my hair on my brows comes in very, very light. So looking back, it actually is pretty funny looking. So now let's talk about the difference between microneedling to the ombre or powder brows. First, starting with microneedling. Microneedling is actually the process of drawing individual hairs almost in, drawing lines in with a small, tiny, tiny little razor blade. And then they put a mask on which actually tints the color so if you have a tattoo and you're doing a pink color, that pink color is in the needle that is going in. With this, the color, you're going to put it on and it kind of sinks into those open cuts for lack of a better term. And trust me, this is not going to be a video that's going to tell you medical terms. This is just my experience and how I can kind of relate to it or tell you in, my, in layman's terms what happened. So you then put the tint on, they put the tint on and you sit with that so it absorbs in. And then they're gonna go back in and do multiple layers of that because it's hard to see those individual strokes. Now you cannot work out, you cannot drink alcohol, you can't take Advil or blood thinners ahead of time because that's gonna make it even more difficult. So microblading is physically looking more like individual hair strokes which in the beginning I was super excited about because anything more than what I had is better. I always have said, you know, they say your brows are sisters or no, they're not supposed to be twins, they're supposed to be sisters. I say mine were distant cousins because they didn't look anything alike. Now they actually do. So at the two year mark, I switched over to ombre powder brows. I went to a different person. I had gone to the same person for the first two years and I really liked them, but I was looking for someone, and I had done my research on this, that was closer to my home, that still had really, really good results, and people really loved it, but kind of gave me a little bit more fullness to mine. Mine also, when they faded, they faded down to almost a grayish undertone because I use retinols and Retin-A, and you can try to stay away from them, but no matter what you do, it ends up on your brows. So it faded down to almost a grayish shade. So I went in and she does a combination of the ombre powder brows and the microblading. So it kind of gives you more shading to it. And mine kind of 
The problem with the microblading and my eyebrows is I had so few eyebrow hairs that you could tell that those lines were too harsh. So it's kind of like if I used an eyebrow pencil and I had no brows and I drew hairs, it would be very obvious. You kind of have to soften them a little bit. And that was exactly what was happening. So when I changed up and went to a different person at the two year mark, I did that because she does a combination of the ombre powder brows and microblading. We sat down, we talked about it, and we decided to go with the ombre powder brows for mine to give me more fullness to them. And so it wouldn't be as noticeable where my actual hairs were or weren't. We did that. I loved the results. It gave me a much fuller brow. It gave me a much more defined arch to it. Now keep in mind, the difference is, is it does not look like pieces of hair. It actually looks like just a coloring in if I had colored in my brows and then kind of brushed them all the way out so there were no individual strokes, if that kind of makes more sense to it. And that was in 2019. Now I had an appointment in 2020, which we all know that all went to hell in a handbasket. So I did not end up getting my brows done in 2020. So I ended up going back this year in March of 2021 to have my touch up. So there was a year in between there that I didn't have a touch up done. Some people are gonna need a touch up every year, like me using retinols. Some people, if you don't have as much redness to your brows or want as much warmth to your brows, the warmth fades faster than a more standard kind of brownish color. So yours may not necessarily fade that fast. They say you will need a touch up anywhere from a year to two years. It's gonna vary by you and your body, how it metabolizes, how much skin you exfoliate, all of those different things. So for me personally, it's about the one year mark. My brows have a very gray down tone to them. And so I went in to have them touched up. Before I go and have all of this done, I wanted to show you guys what my brows look like right now. There is nothing on them at all. I have some mascara on and a little bit of concealer, but these are them. They have faded tremendously. It has been almost two years since I had them last touched up. They're kind of becoming a little bit like grayed out. So I'm very excited to have them done. Okay, I just got back home. My brows are done. I love them. I'm so excited. They look super dark right now. Trust me, they're not going to stay dark. It actually fades down after. It takes a couple days, but I am so excited they got done and I'll take you guys through. Good morning. We are at day four on my eyebrows and I wanted to take a second and show you this real quick. Right here somewhere, you can see the scab is starting to lift a little bit. So we are starting to get through the process. Wanted to jump on real quick and show you guys, you can see how they're getting a little patchy in through here. So they're starting to lose some of the scabbing. I apologize, I'm doing this on my webcam. The pups are back behind me. You see them back there. So taking a look at my brows, Here's where we're at today. You can see the flaking is almost gone. There's a little bit of scabs left. I feel like you can see this outer corner here, a little bit right through here, a spot right here, you can see right there. And this has been, let's think about this. Tomorrow will be a week. And one of the things we had talked about when I was there in 2019 was on this brow here, when she did the microblading, she went one stroke a little bit too far and she was trying to hide a pore that I have over here, which I understand, but it made the brows so they weren't exactly right. And it actually looked like it was too long past the outer corner of my eyes. So mine end right here right now, and it was more like this. And we had talked about in 2019 going in and doing a removal of that little bit out there. But she suggested for a year to use some retinol products over there and see if that faded it down. Well, I ended up, as we know, as I mentioned, I didn't go in until 2021 and it hadn't faded enough. So I do have another appointment in June to go back and have that removed. But I wanna to talk to you about this appointment and what my thoughts were and what I plan on doing when I go back in June. Because I think a lot of times we talk about the fact of our results, what we loved, and a lot of times we don't talk about what we didn't like. And I was not thrilled this time with my powder brow experience. 
I love the girl I went to, went back in, we talked about the fact that they had kind of grayed down a little bit and she did color them in. She gave them a nice kind of rich brown to it when they were going through the process of fading and scabbing and all of that. If you wanna see the whole process, go check out my first video. I will link that down below for you. That one I show you a step-by-step -step day process. Now I will say in that video as well, a lot of things have changed in how you care for them aftercare. Just be aware of that going into this. So this time, after they were completely done healing, I noticed they did not have much color to them, not even the brown. They had no warmth to them. And they really, truly were just a little bit darker version of what I had gone in with. And that to me is not what I wanted. I wanted them to have more warmth to them. I wanted to have more pigment to them. They were just not what I wanted them to be. So I have actually had to still fill them in and kind of use some different products to get them to where I want to be. Now, a lot of people will ask, once you have this done, do you have to put products on your brows? Some people don't, some people do. As they fade, obviously you will. Typically, I can go a good six months before I feel like I need to use any brow products to kind of give me that warmth and more, a little bit more darkness to them. Darkness isn't the right word. More definition to them, like noticeable that they, you can see my brows more predominantly and where they arch in things. Because I have a lot of color in through the front, but they lose more color as they go out through here. Obviously, again, because that's where it's gonna fade the most, there's not as much area there. So I was not thrilled with my results, and I'm actually very excited that I have an appointment in June to go back and touch this up, because I also discussed with her the fact that I want to go back and do another pass over on my brows to give them more pigmentation to them, because I, at one month after, had already had to start coloring them back in to get that definition that I wanted. Now, everybody is gonna want something different, how much actual definition they want. They do go through and measure out your face. They draw them on, they do all of that. The details are in my first video of how they map them out so they are correctly shaped for your face, where your arch is, where it ends, where it starts, all of that. So I love, love, love this process. And I will put photos in of my before and after from this time. And I love the results and I love the fact it's kind of like, I jokingly say, it's kind of like coloring in the lines. I've got the template there of the exact shape I want, but now I just need to color it in to get that actual definition I want. Now before, I would have never been able to get this shape with the way my brows looked and how rounded they were. Even if I wanted to, they wouldn't have done this. Now they do. All I have to do for maintenance as well on any of the hairs that grow kind of underneath or above, I just take one of those little face shavers and I clean them up. I don't get them waxed. I don't get them. I don't pluck them. I don't do any of those things. I just simply go in with a little razor and clean them up and it works perfectly. I love, love, love the microblading and the ombre powder brows. They are both amazing process. However, I just wish I had more color and vibrance to them this last time around. So I wanted to sit down and discuss my experiences over the four years, tell you what I've loved about it, and tell you what just didn't work out for me. Do not be afraid to let the person you're going to know that maybe they didn't come out exactly how you wanted them. This is a service that you are paying for, and if you are going to someone who is reputable and who is good, they will have no problem fixing it to make it look the way you want it to. So so those are my thoughts on my four year update on my microblading and ombre powder brow experience. If you have any questions about this, please put them down below and let me know. And as I mentioned, if you are new around here, I would love if you hit that subscribe button and followed along here with my channel. I will link all of the videos that I had previously put up about my eyebrow experience down below for you guys. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me and have a great day. Okay, I apologize, the pups are back behind me. You see them? Wait, which way? There we go. I apologize, I'm doing this on my webcam. The pups are back behind me. You see them back there? So taking a look at my brows, here's where we're at today. You can see 
the flaking is almost gone. There's a little bit of scabs left. I feel like you can see this outer corner here, a little bit right through here, There's a spot right here, and see right there. And this has been, let's think about this. Tomorrow will be a week.